Won't you, my dear brother? I praise the Lord for you, man. Praise God. Father in heaven, we come to thee thanking thee, Lord. We thank thee for this day you give us. Thank thee for the opportunity we have to come out and hear thy word. We ask that you be with our pastor, Lord, and give him the words that we need. Thank you, Lord, that we still have service on Sunday night. And Amen. We just thank thee for each one that's out, Lord. And ask if there be one here without thee as their Savior, Lord, that they'd accept thee before they leave. Amen. Thank thee that for the unity we have in this church, Lord. And uh, just ask that uh, you be with our pastor and give him the knowledge of uh, how to do things, Lord. And we just can't thank thee enough for him and uh, his wife and just thank thee for all things you do for us in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Have a seat if you will. We're just uh, so excited that the Facebook crowd out there got to see me beat on the help for a minute. Then. <laughs> Isaac, I just tried to get him over here so we could go. Go ahead, man, you crazy dude. I, I can't help it if I respect prayer too much to walk in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> Welcome to Fair Spout to Church, everybody. Uh, for those of you who don't know us, uh, that's the pastor right there. <laughs> <laughs> the bad behaving guy. <laughs> uh, so great to have everybody here. Those of you who might be here for the first time, we welcome you. Those of you who are here usually, we welcome you just the same, even though we see you every week. Because in God's house, we love each other all the same. That's right. Amen. So right now... Uh, I believe next up is going to be Pastor Mike with the Congregational Most Hymn. certainly, yes. And if you turn to number five, six, to God be the glory. Hey, Let's sing that together, yeah. okay? To God Praise be God. the glory. Woo. Yes. To, to God be the glory. Great things he has done. So love me the world that he gave us. His Son, who yielded His life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father. The Son and give Him the glory. Great things He have done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer. The promise of God, the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from. A heart and receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he has done. Sing it out on the land. Great, great things he had taught us, great things he had done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. Oh, but your and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus we see. Oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he has done. Have a seat. Have you ever wondered what the meaning of life was? Watch this great film. This is fantastic right here. You know, one of the worst feelings imaginable is the feeling of being alone. This is why solitary confinement is one of the cruelest punishments ever in human history. We were designed for relationships. 
The most meaningful thing in life is to be truly known by another person. But this can actually be kind of scary too. I mean, what if I let people down or what if when someone learns who I really am, they'll realize they can't love me? Wow. Oh. I mean, how are we supposed to really find meaningful relationships? Right. And so the Bible speaks into all of this. It says that God created the world in order to share with us the beauty of existence. God's desire for us is to have significant friendships, to be part of families, to create things and to share our work with others. And all the while depending on God as our source of love and life. But here's the thing, there's so many barriers to that. There's loneliness, fear, hatred. And the Bible claims that these are results of our being disconnected from God. Without God, we don't actually know who we are anymore. But at the center of the Bible story, is Jesus, who wants to bring us back into a relationship with God. Jesus claimed that God loves us for who we are and that he calls us to a relationship with him despite our failures. And when you realize how loved by God you are, that he is not ashamed of you, it changes everything. It gives you a source of love that is not your own. So the story of the Bible is calling us into the most important relationship. It's calling us to know and be known by the Creator God oh, Himself. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Man, tell me if that's not something special to look amen. at. I mean, God is so good. I am blessed to see all of you. Chris, it's such a joy to have you again. Miss Hilda, what a blessing. What a joy to see so many different faces that are just now joining us as a congregation. And do you know the congregation is growing? Hey, Do you know that? God. What's odd is that it's in the middle of the summer. Mm -hmm. I have not seen that before in my churches, in the churches that the Lord has given me to be able to pastor. I've never seen growth during the summer, but last summer it happened. And in the fall, we saw more growth. And this summer, it's happening again. Amen. This morning, there were between 130 and 140 people. And I kind of messed up on the count as I was going through because I forgot my Bible when I came home. And there were 10 visitors in here that I didn't catch this morning. And so I counted 127. Then I realized there's 137. So we praise the Lord for what he's doing. And then again tonight, yes, I praise God for that. Then again tonight, just to see some folks we didn't see this morning. I know the kids group is going well. Dwayne, I love seeing you, buddy. What an honor it is. What a blessing to see so many of you. It's awesome. Miss Amanda Gill. You're here with your daughter. Praise the Lord for you. You're a joy to us. You know that? You're a blessing. Praise Jesus Almighty. Hey, ushers, come on down. Now, listen to me about this. I want you to get this. Uh, the ushers are serving you. Amen. They're not there to bombard you. You know, I remember once seeing my son standing next to someone. He was taking up the offering one time. Tony was. And he stood there like this. <laughs> Waited for the... Our ushers are not doing that, okay? <laughs> Do you get that? Amen. So here's what I want you to grasp. Don't start going for your money after the prayer. Go for it now, okay? Uh, go for it ahead of time. And when they come, you'll be ready to give it to them. Uh, understand that your giving before the Lord is between you and the Lord. These guys are not doing anything to be a bother to you. They're wanting to serve you. They are the slaves of Christ. They're the servants of Christ to be able to do this very important task. These are trustees and deacons in our church. And so understand that their position is what it is. And they are what the Lord would have us to do. A Bible tells us we're supposed to serve one another. Amen. And the Bible says that the deacons and the trustees are to serve tables. And that's what they're doing. They're serving tables. They're serving you. Father, won't you take your word tonight and apply it to our hearts. Thank you so much, Lord, for the tithe for offerings, for missions, for building fund, for extra things, Lord, even that we'll be talking about tonight with reference to the building. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing. We're overwhelmed by it truly and amazed by what you're doing in this church as we continue to just grow and grow and grow. I praise you for my deacons and trustees. The loyalty is unbelievable. The unity among the brethren, it's exciting, Father. I pray you continue to give us wisdom as we continue tonight to honor and glorify you and lift your name in Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
Brother Travis. Come on down here, if you will, Brother Travis, and lead us, will you? Hymn 516. Come on, everybody that would. Let's sing together. Redeemed, how I love. You know this song? Redeemed, hymn 516. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. If you... It's not the right one, so forget about that. We'll find another. 515, is it? Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. M515 is what you want. Redeem, redeem. Sing that one if you will, if you know it. How you doing, Ruth? Good to see you, Paul. Guys, love to you. I'm so glad to see people still walking in. That's amazing on a Sunday night. Praise the Lord. All right, let's do it. Dear ones, you ready? I have a song I love to sing since I have been redeemed. My Redeemer, Savior, King, since I have been redeemed. Since I have been redeemed. Since I have been redeemed, I will glory in His name. Since I have been redeemed. I will glory in my Savior's name. You're doing all right. You're not doing good enough, though. You're not doing good enough. Do it, do it. Uh, you know, that you're having a hard time getting that one up, aren't you? What's the name of it? It was called Re Since I Have Been Redeemed. Since, I, yeah, I messed up on that. I'm sorry about that. Travis, keep guiding us, man. I got, you. I got you. I got oh, this. Buddy. I got this. <laughs> I have a price that satisfies since I have been redeemed to do His will my highest price since I have been redeemed since I have been redeemed since I have been redeemed I would glory in His name since I have been redeemed I will glory in my Savior's name. Stand together on that fourth and sing with us. I have a home prepared for me. How many of you guys ready to go to heaven? Hey, 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 you better be ready because somebody's going to pull out a gun sometime or something. You know, you know, Or you'll have a heart attack somewhere. Are you ready to head to heaven? I hope and pray. Let's go on that fourth. You ready? I have a home prepared for me. Since I have been redeemed, you singing. Man, praise the Lord. Since I have been redeemed, so praise God. Since I have been redeemed, glory to God. Since I have been redeemed, I will glory in His name. Since I have been redeemed, I will glory in my Savior's name. Brother Michael guide us and all hail the power of Jesus' name. Hey, okay, number 43, 43, all hail the power of Jesus' name. Let's sing it together. Man, that's a good one, too. Israel's race, ye ransomed from the foe. Hail him who saves you by his grace and crown him Lord of all. Hail him who saves you by his grace and crown him Lord of all. Let, Let every on this terrestrial ball to him all majesty ascribe and crown him lord of all to him all majesty ascribe and crown him lord of all oh that with yonder saint 
when wrong we at his feet may fall. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. Hey, Amen. God bless you, man. Have a seat, dear one. Yes, you may have a seat. Hey, if you have your bulletin, you'll see what's happening, right? You'll see that there's the True Word Bridges, and you can get involved with the sign-up sheet back there. Well, that's great, exciting. Come out Tuesday nights at 6 o'clock. That's the only one that you want to go to. <laughs> that's the diet and exercise one with Tom Seacrest. Join me Tuesday nights at 6. I got my time. So after, what's that? Mm, I can't promise oh, anything. Yeah. No, sorry. Anybody it's up to you, those? but I can, I can okay. exhort hand. you. Yeah. Just go all over, all over. Whoever the uh, wants, missions meeting is tonight after church, right? So after the service, where do they stay here? Yeah, just stick around. Just 715 stick around is here. what I said this morning. 715, now give me time to, to greet a few people and then we'll get right at it. Excellent. Right? So that'll yes. be all set. This Saturday is the yard sale as well as the ice cream social. Yard sale at 8 and you got the ice cream social at 12. And uh, then coming up you'll see there's the epic involvement and such. Special music, what's, why don't you come on, get ready. Uh, there, Aunt Julie, very good. And uh, Aunt Julie, are you joining the Tuesday night class at 6? <laughs> <laughs> Quit messing with your sis, your aunt. <laughs> Thank you, Aunt Julie, for ministering to us in song. Hey, check that out on your bulletin. See all that's going on. The missionary letters, you want to check that out as well. And uh, you'll get a real blessing from those letters. Uh, does anyone know about the Caputo's ministry? All right, you want to check it out. You got to go check it out. You got to see who we're supporting because they're, they're, that's exciting what's going on. It go is. go yes. get the Caputo Missionaries letter. Learn about their college campus ministry. It's really exciting. Check that out. All right. was really given and I then that he always kept his word there's a new name written down in glory and it's mine oh yes it's mine and the wise and angels in the story a sinner has come home there's a new name written down in glory and it's mine Oh yes, it's mine. Yeah. With my sins forgiven, I am bound for heaven, never more to roam. Good job. In the saved by grace, living in the joy to my soul. I am forgiven, and I know whether the there's a new name right, written down in glory, right, and it's mine, oh yes it's mine, with my sins forgiven, so glory has come home, Ooh, yeah. there's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine, oh yes it's mine, with my sins forgiven, I am bound for heaven. I think I anybody enjoy that as much as tonight these people did. I mean, you did great, Julie. You're one of my favorite sisters I've ever had. 
She's my only sister, you guys. September the 4th, I want to make clear to you, this is a very, very important time. If you've ever wanted to be in the audio-visual department of the church, dealing with the cameras, dealing with the sound system, with the computer, I'm going to tell you, Robin and Dr. Richard Pinkine have done a great job of forming teams they do these great teams. Now, September the 4th, they're going to talk with you because anybody that has anything to do with sound ought to be in that group, okay? And uh, Miss Robin was expressing to me this morning, sometimes on Friday evenings or during the week if there's a wedding or things like that, some mics aren't getting put away. Some things aren't exactly the way. They... I tell you what, man, it's important because it's just like Brother Oscar's tools. I'm going to refer to you in the sermon several times, my brother, throughout the evening. Have anybody been to Oscar's shop before? He's got this wall behind him there. Doesn't he, brother, Mr. Roberto? He's got this wall behind him, and he's got tools up there. Have you noticed that? I don't do that. My tools are in a pile, you see. But bro, that's right. Brother Oscar knows if he does that, he's not going to be able to find his tools. And so, boy, I tell you, I love that. We're going to talk about it. You can, you can already be banking on Jeremiah chapter 32 and Jeremiah 51 tonight. You can be banking on that. Jeremiah 32 and Jeremiah 51. How can I be a tool of God? Am I alive to do that work? Is that the reason that I'm here? Those of you who want to be members, Jack, Kim, I think we'll do this even before the sermon. Why don't you come up here? Miss Sandy Rice, you've been back. Do you feel that you should be a member of our church? I do. <laughs> come on up here then, all right? I think Sandy's already gone through you guys, talked with you, right? Yes. Have you? Huh? Come on up here then. Oh, come on. Come on up here. Come on up here. Okay. You, you want to just do it from there? That's fine. We'll give you the right hand of fellowship in the pew. Come on up here, Kim and Jack. Uh, also, listen, there are several other families. Hey, you know what, you guys? There are several other families that I have on the list that we have uh, 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 been kind of accumulating here. It's in my pile of tools here. Yes, that's right. Uh this list of people, Sandy, you're actually on here. Uh, and then uh, Cliff Hopkins also this morning. We should have had him come up. Uh, there's several that I believe that the Lord has already pointed out to us and that have gone through the processes. We haven't given the right hand of fellowship. Uh, Buddy and Megan are on vacation this week from what I understand. So we won't be able to receive them tonight, but they're on here as well. Uh, John Rigney, are you here tonight, John? Anywhere? Okay, we'll be talking to him as well. And then uh, there's a couple, like Henry Miles couldn't be here. Peggy and Harlow's couldn't be here. Uh, several. Rosemary and Charles were here this morning. Should have dealt with that today. Um, every, every so often I'm seeing people that I'm thinking, man, we really need to work on getting them up here. Okay? So if you're one of those that say, man, I want the right hand of fellowship. Well, we're just, all you got to do is go through the process talking to deacons a little bit. Make sure that we know that you're saved and baptized, that you can agree with the Constitution, and then we'll give you that right hand. But right now, Kim, you are the star of the show. <laughs> Stand up, everybody, won't you? Stand up. Uh, deacons, trustees, why don't you come up here? Give the right hand of fellowship to Kim and Jack here, and everybody just give them an applause, won't you? Thank you so much. I love you. I am grateful. Give you the right hand of fellowship. Right hand, right there. There you go. Good. Praise the Lord for people that are coming. Continue to pray for others also. Miss Hilda, I don't know. One day, maybe it'll happen. You know, if you want to, we'd love to have you. Anybody that desires membership, you just let me know. I'd be glad to talk to you about it, okay? You come on up. All right. All right, let me tell you, true word is exciting. You can have a seat now. True word is exciting. A lot of you are looking to do that. I'm happy that you will. And I'm praying that the Lord will give you wisdom as we move forward. Uh, we need to meet with the deacons also 
uh, next week and talk some more about our trustees. But we did earmark five gentlemen that we're praying about because we do need a couple of other trustees. And we'll talk to you more about that as time passes. Yes, sir. Does she really? Okay. All right. Well, praise the Lord, Hilda. We get to talk with you in just like... Is it okay if we get with you right after the service, some of the deacons? Okay, let's do it. Right after the service, okay? And we'll, we'll just run through your testimony. We just need to know you're saved and baptized, honey. That's all there is to it. And, uh, and that you can come. Get, we'll give you a copy of the Constitution. You can review that. Jeremiah 32, if you will. And Jeremiah 52, 51. Jeremiah 32 and Jeremiah 51. These tools, man, I tell you, there are some things that you'd be surprised about. How many of you know that a rag can be a tool? How many of you know that? How many of you have ever needed a rag and your hands were just filthy with something? You know what I'm saying? And uh, what, what kind of grease do you get all over your hands sometimes? You ever get transmission fluid all over your hands? I bet you get everything, don't you? All that junk, all that car junk. Man alive, my friends, it happens. It happens. Now, get this, that our whole purpose for being in the church is to be used of God. Now, be saved. That's a whole other ballgame. That's coming to Christ to give my heart to Him and then start that process. But in the church... As sanctified individuals, as individuals that given themselves to the Lord, that's, that's totally different. While we're here, we're doing what? My friends, we are tools in the hand of the Master. If you're in Isaiah 51, we'll start in verse 19 here. Isaiah 5, pardon me, Jeremiah, that's right, Jeremiah 51, starting in verse 19. Read this. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he's the former of all things. And Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Thou art, listen close to this, thou art my battle axe, all right, and weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy Kingdoms. Title of the message, very simple tonight. How? How can I be a tool used of the Lord? Father, I'm asking for an unction from the Spirit of God tonight to give us wisdom as we look into this very important detail. Lord, everything that you give to us are tools. The things around us that we have physically for our use are tools. And they're illustrations of what you want to do in us, what you desire to see done with us. Father, make us to understand what your goals are. Help us to understand what the whole reason is for our existence, dear Lord God. Take your word and break it open to us tonight in a special way, I pray. And I'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so what kind of things do you have in your garage? Just yell them out. Let me see. Somebody? Wrenches, what else? Hammer. Hammer, what else? Chainsaws. How many? Huh? Yeah, okay. So how many of you have a big, huge battle axe? All right, let me see. Okay. You got a bat. Do you really? No, I saw a look on your face. Like, ooh. It almost was like, I'd like to have one. <laughs> what do you have? A sword. Okay. How many of you got some weapons that are a little unusual? Okay, yes, you've got one. What is it, Jack? Sling blade? Man alive, I'm staying away from you, Jack, I'll tell you. Sling blade. You know Jeff O'Day? That guy, I don't even want to get started. That guy has so many different kinds of things in his house. If you ever want to attack somebody, don't go to Jeff's house, all right? You'll be dead, deader than the dead dead, okay, for sure. Uh, most certainly, my friends, we are in an age where we need defenses. How many of you get that? The Word tells us that we're in the last times. And the Bible says that in the last times, there will be dangerous times. Dangerous times. Now, regardless of what tools you have, it is an incredible illustration to think of God as the garage keeper. Oscar. There's never a time when you are at home 
resting with your wife, that stuff inside of your garage starts to move around by itself. And if it does, I'll never visit you again. All right. <laughs> I tell you something. Nothing just moves around a right of itself. Understand this. You and I have to have a master move us to do what needs to be done. And I'll tell you, there's no greater master. And understand, you and I can have other masters. If you decide to be moved by your emotions, that's a master. If you decide to be moved by your employer, that's a master. If you decide to be moved by money, that's a master. If you decide to be moved by alcohol, alcohol becomes your master. Get this, there's plenty of masters out there. Plenty of things that would take you and move you to do things that God wouldn't have you to do. But our Savior and Sovereign is the only master that we ought to have. Go to Jeremiah, if you will, chapter 32 now, and look at verse 17. Jeremiah 32 and verse 17. Oh, Lord God. I love this. This is really neat. Oh, Lord God, Jeremiah is speaking. Oh, Lord God, behold. We're in stretched out arm. And there's nothing. What does that say? What's too hard for God? Nothing. nothing. When the angel came to Mary, what did he say? Mary said, how can this thing be? I've never been with a man. How can this thing be? You're telling me I'm going to have a man. Manchiak, are you kidding me? How is that going to happen? And the angel said, there is nothing too hard for God. He actually asked the question, is there anything too hard for God? What an incredible thing. Now get this, you see very much the same thing here. What does it say on that last phrase? Say it with me. And there is nothing too hard for thee. Verse 18, you'll see this. Thou showest loving kindness unto thousands, and recompense the bosom of their children. God, the Lord of hosts, is His name. What does He do in that verse? What does He do in that verse? He recompenses. Do you all get, do you all understand what a recompense is? What is a recompense? Someone just tell me what your thoughts are on that. A consequence? Very good. What? What? Yes, a payment. A payment back, all right? Recompensing, all right? Now listen, how does he do this? By your works. By your works. I was talking with the Laughlin Center folks today, and I said, these passages, and I was going through these, these passages are some of the reasons I'm not a socialist. Because my God tells me that He recompenses according to my work, according to the fruit of my hands, is the way He puts it. According to the fruit of my hand. If you'll go through Jeremiah, you'll see that phrase several times. How many of you do some regular fruit tree work? You just have fruit trees. How many? Let me see. Nobody? Oh, you do? Really? What do you have? Uh, Miss Ruth, what do you have? Right. Oscar, what do you guys got? But <laughs> Oscar's growing a bug farm, he said. <laughs> but I've, I've been over there and seen your bushes, and I've seen some of your, your uh, uh, growing things there on, on the property. And most certainly, man, Ruth, I'm coming to your house to pick some fruit. Uh, how many of you know what a blessing it is just to go out to your raspberry bushes, your blueberry bushes, to see some things that you can pull off of them trees? And anything in the farm, anything in the garden. I love Jessica. We love us some cucumbers, don't we, girl? You got some of them cucumbers, don't you? You know, uh, Jessica was telling me that, you know, she has a pig. How many of you know that? Jessica has a pig. What's his name? How many of you know? Earl. Earl, that's right. He was given to her by the horsemen. 
You know, hey, by the way, you ever need any dealings or dogs or anything, you go right to the horsemen, right? They've got all of that going on. So you talk to them. But what is that pig maybe that big or so? Small? Oh, even smaller than that. Still? That small still? I thought he might have grown just a... a a t- <laughs> he's not getting longer, he's getting wider, they said, all right. <laughs> well, that pig eats their corn. Because they had a few stalks of corn growing, didn't they? And they just decide, well, this is worth, worth Earl's food, right? How many of you just love to watch the fruit grow? I mean, you guys have that going on. And the Lord says this, he says this, according to the fruit of your hands, I will recompense you. According to the what? Fruit of your what? Hands. That's why it concerns me greatly in our country. I'm not going to get off on a tangent here, but it does concern me greatly that there are many, many people sitting down doing nothing. And we get irritated with that, do we not? Those of you who are hard workers, in this country, people work hard. Well, I've had some people tell me, I can't get in somewhere. And that's true. That does happen. Sometimes it's just hard to find the right fit. And we're not downing people that can't work or just don't. There's nothing wrong with that. What I'm saying is hard work gives you recompense. Can I also just add this? My wife works very hard and she does not have a conventional job. Many housewives, many ladies and men work in their properties and do things all over the county, all over the place, helping people, doing things. They're busy, they just aren't making money. But the recompense they get from that might not be green. Do you guys understand that? It might not be green paper, it may be something else. And don't you know, how many of you know, it just feels good to be recompensed. You know, it just feels good to be paid in one way or another. Now, look with me, if you will, at that second place again. Verse 18, that second verse that we were looking at. Now, show us what? Loving kindness unto how many? Do we realize that in this county, thousands of people need Jesus Christ? Thousands of people need Him. The other night, I was out there in Seaford. And I was preaching out in the middle of the town. And I'm not, you know what? I I know that that's extra. And there are plenty of people that do things that get recompensed in all kinds of ways. My recompense that night was just to see people in their cars waving out and saying, Praise the Lord, Pastor. God bless you. Keep going, Pat." That was exciting to me. But I wonder, Dad... You were there in Laurel that time. You was waving at people and you saw people waving back and praising the Lord and all that. Dad, do you wonder like I do of how many of those people are just religious and they're really not saved? How many of them are yelling and screaming but they're recompensed the true salvation which is the greatest recompense you could have? Now get this and understand, it is a gift. It's not something I earn. But it has its value is what I mean to say. It's the most valuable thing you can have is to go to heaven and be with Christ. But he reaches out to how many with his loving kindness? Thousands. And get this. And recompenses the iniquity of the fathers into the bosom of their children after them. The great, the mighty God, the Lord of hosts is his name. Do you understand that when you raise a child in the wrong way, you're teaching that child things that will he, carry, he will carry into his adulthood and through the end of his life? Do you understand that? Oh, my friends, be so very careful. Isaac, as you start to raise a family one day, Garrett, perhaps you and Liz will be a family one day. When those first little rugrats come along, Make sure that in the very first moments of their life, they're feeling loved. And at the same time, they're getting the discipline that they need. Adam, Jessica, it's not an easy job, is it? (laughs) Chase and Patty, it's not an easy job, is it? How many of you know it's not an easy job? Grandmoms, granddaddies, boy, it's a big deal. Great in counsel. Look at verse 19 with me. Read this. Great in counsel and mighty in work. 
For thine eyes are open upon all the ways of the sons of men. To give everyone what? According to his ways. And according to the... Isn't that what we just said a minute ago? See, throughout Jeremiah, he says that. And he says it. And he says it. And he says it. Now, understand, who's going to pick up a tool in the garage? Well, there could be any number of masters. Any number of masters. But no master is like the Jeremiah 32, verses 17 to 19 master. No master is like this one that recompenses righteously. No master is like this one that's fair and correct in everything that he does. How many of us realize our God is in full control of everything? He's in full control of this church. He's in full control of every life in this church, every family. He is going to take care of you and your business. You know what business I'm talking about. He's going to take care of everything that He wants you to deal with in your life and how He wants you to deal with it. Now you go back, if you will, to Jeremiah 51. With that in mind, understand you are His what? You are his what? Battle axe. You are his what? Weapon of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations. And with thee will I destroy kings. And now, Pastor, I did not realize that we are in battle. Well, man alive, my friend. We really need to talk to you more about that, don't we? We need to preach more. How many of you know we're in battle all the time? How many of you know Satan hates this church? He hates what's happening here. He's using evil men, even in this very city, to try to come against this church. Can I tell you, my friends, it hadn't worked. God's still on the throne. The Lord is still working through all of you. The Lord is moving in a special way to unite and bring peace and to bring what needs to happen in harmonious fellowship. I honestly, I'm telling you, I've never seen anything like this church. I've never seen such a united group of people. And Satan, oh, he's so mad at you. He hates your guts. He hates it. He's doing all he can to disrupt and hurt the union in this church. He wants you to be desperate for getting out, to get away from things of the Lord, to not be what you are. He hates this constant union, constant love, constant concern for one another. He hates it. You know what I'm saying? Now get this, our entire church is being bombarded in different ways. And you know what he's saying? <laughs> Let me tell you what tool I'm going to use against the devil. You, you are my battle axe. Every time you move your hand in favor of the Lord, that he's going to use it for his glory and honor. Do we get it that every time we yield ourselves fully to Him, He makes us feel awfully important because you are His weapon of war. For with thee, what? Will I break in pieces the nations? With thee, what? Will I destroy kingdoms? You say, now, Pastor, in His project, in Israel, and He's saying that they come against other nations. Well, the question for me and for you then is, today, who are His people? Sandy, who are His people? Are you His people? Keith, are you His people? Christine, are you His people? Yes, you are. Doesn't that make you feel good? Doesn't that make you You are the one that God wants to use to break the backs of all the enemy. And you say, now, Pastor, who's our enemy? Oh, you know our enemies. Satan, the flesh, and the devil. He wants to destroy the flesh. He wants to destroy Satan. He wants to destroy the devil. Now, our flesh, we know, is with us until when? Until Through you. How often times are you completely surrendered to Him? Are you getting up in the morning and saying, Oh my God, please, take me over. How many are doing that? Oh my dear Lord, throughout the day, take me over. Father, please subdue my flesh. How many need to do that right now even? Say, Oh God, make me what I should be. Verse 21, And with thee will I break in pieces the horse 
and his rider. With thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. With thee also will I break in pieces man and woman. With thee will I break in pieces old and young. With thee will I break in pieces the young man and the maiden. What is he doing? Well, Oscar, he's not fixing cars. But he sure is ripping apart a bunch of stuff. <laughs> now get this. Who's he ripping apart a bunch of stuff with? The battle axe. You and I. You say, I didn't know I was allowed to call my wife a battle axe. <laughs> you knew that was coming, didn't you? <laughs> Some of you are like, oh, this is crazy pastor. He's going to mention that phrase sometime along the way. No, my friends, we're all battle axes, all right? Man, woman, and children, we're all battle axes. And the Lord's using us. Look at verse 23. I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock. Oh, my friends, understand. The Lord desires to tinker around with whatever He's getting into to fix it. How many of you ever felt tinkered around with by God? What is He doing to me? Tell me now. Slip your hand up. Have you ever thought that? What is He doing to me? Have you ever said it? I remember, I'll never forget, down in the Estación Atlantida, there is a bridge. I'll never forget it as long as I live. I remember going across there on my little moped. You know. I think it went about 15 miles an hour. But as I was coming across that bridge, that particular day, we'd had a rough time at church. People were going through rough times. Folks were having it hard. And it's just like it is here. There are summertime slumps in Uruguay just like there are here. People go off and they have all kinds of vacations. Now get this. Their summertime is during Christmas. Get that around your head for a second. They actually have hot weather during the month of December down in South America in Uruguay. And so that's their time of vacationing. And so we get double the vacation because people are away for Christmas and they're away because it's a beautiful summery time outside. And as I was going across that bridge, I was thinking about all the empty pews. And I realized that it's going to be difficult to grow a church in an environment like this. And Uruguay is the least evangelized country in South America. And as I was rowing across that bridge, Brother Garrett, I said, Lord God, what are you doing to us? Do you care about this church? Do you care about this area? Lord God, what are you doing? And it was as if he said, Son, who do you think you are? I had to pull off the side of the road. I was so embarrassed. Don't. Second guess. God. Don't do it. You want to be a tool in the hand of the Almighty King? Don't. Second guess. God. Don't second guess God. He knows precisely what He's doing. Do you understand that? Don't second guess God. When you know what His will is, you put your feet planted firmly on that will, and you nail your feet to that particular will, and you make certain you stand firm as the Lord tells us to do. I tell you where you want to do that most is right on the Word of God. Amen. Old Dr. Bob Jones III used to say that phrase. When you find the will of God, slam your feet down on it, nail your feet to it, and stick with it. And he explained that the very will of God is right here in this book. All that has to happen is that we believe it. Oh, my friends, don't be messing around with trying to change this book. This book is forever preserved. 
not just in heaven, but right here in my hands, I have the preserved Word of God. I want you to understand that this God who gave us this book is wanting to use you as a tool with this book in your hands to go and tell the world about Him. And can I tell you, you have a confiable thing in your hand. You have something you can be fully confident in. And He will break apart what? The pieces of husbandsmen. He Look at this. The yoke of oxen with thee will I break in pieces captains and rulers and I will render unto Babylon to all the inhabitants of Chaldea all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, saith the Lord. Can I tell you something, my friends? I've read the end of this book and we win! We win! We're going to be with our Lord and Savior winning. We're going to be with our Lord and Savior fighting. And it's going to be kind of a funny battle because we're going to be all up there in the sky and all the peoples of the earth will gather together against Jesus, the Bible tells us. And I'll be standing there, Oscar, with him. I might be five miles away because I'm not much of anything, but I'm going to be up there with all the saints. And the Bible says that we will come with him to this earth. Do you guys get this and understand this scenario? How many of you realize this is part of what the Bible says? You know this, Gareth? And so we're going to be sitting there waiting. And the Bible says a sword will go out of his mouth and slay the nations. And all of us will be up there going, what in the world were we here for? But you are his battle axe. You're a battle axe. You were there because he wanted you to be there. You were there to witness the victory. You are here now to witness victory today in your own life. Don't you ever get to thinking that he cannot have victory over alcohol. Don't you think he can't have victory over narcotics. Don't you think he can't have victory over those people that hate your guts. Don't you think he can't have victory over those who are liars and are stealing and are dealing in your life with things around you that you just feel like you're out of control on your God and your king already won against all of that and my friends our savior and king will win the lost these people I've been talking about the very ones who are so vile you'd say oh my I have so many enemies and they're human enemies oh my friends God can save the soul of anybody I don't care who they are he can get in and tinker with them and you know he'll he use his battle axe you my friends don't stop working don't stop blessing the Lord don't stop for any reason he says in verse 24 he'll render unto Babylon do <laughs> do this do, do this well you just stand with me for a second the last verse I want to read to you I think we I think it will be a blessing to you get this look I am against the O destroying mountain. He says, which destroyeth the earth. I will stretch out mine hand upon thee and roll thee down from the rocks. Verse 25. And I will make thee a burnt mountain. And they shall not take of thee a stone for a corner, nor a stone for foundations. But thou shalt be desolate forever, saith the Lord. Set you up a standard in the law, in, in the land. Blow the trumpet among the nations. Why? Prepare the nations against her. Call together against her the kingdoms of Ararat and Minim. Babylon, in Scripture, is the picture of the final days and the reigning body, the governing body. How many of you know our governing bodies are really evil? You do get that. In these last days, that's who Babylon is. And the Bible tells us this. It's not just one people. But nations from all over will gather together and they will find themselves in opposition to the evil of these particular people. Your God and your king is setting up things behind the scenes that we know not of right now. But you are his tool. You're his tool. Keith, come here. Come here. Adam, come here. Isaac, come here. Garrett, come here. Julie, come here. Peggy, come here. Liz, come. Barb, come here. Lou, come on up here. Miss Cindy, come up here. Gather as close to me as you will, you guys, all right? 
Come on over here. Adam, come right here next to me. Kind of gather around me right here. All right? Come here. Come here. Do you know there are bunches of people out there looking for protection from the evil one? And they don't know how to get it. But if we as a church will gather around them and be those used of God to protect the souls of men, draw them unto himself. All my friends, there's nothing that without Jesus, I, what is our God? What did we talk about this morning? Our God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. How many of you would join with me and say, Lord, I want to be a tool. I want to be a protecting force. God, I desire for you to use me in that way. If you sent a lot to flow through, he will utilize you in ways you did not think were possible. Does our God do things that are impossible? Yes, he does. Friends. Do this right now, if you will. Bow your heads and close your eyes. And if you will, just simply say to our Lord and Savior, God, what do you want from me? God, how do you want me to be used? How do you want me to be a tool in your hand? Now, the word tells us that one of those ways is to go into all the world and preach the gospel. We know some things from the scripture, but there may be some specifics about where you do that and how you do that. What words you would say that the Holy Spirit of God will give to you through time. Are you listening to the voice of God? To be a protection, to be a watch, to be that guy in the tower that says, hey, Someone's coming. Be careful. The evil one's on the prowl. Your flesh is on the prowl. The old world, the old government, it's after you all. Listen, dear ones, who would come down here right now and just stand. Stand before the Lord and say, my God, whatever you want, I'm willing to do it. Whatever you want, I'm willing to do it. Why don't you come? You need to get on your knees. Do that. You guys that are up here, would you just stay with me for a second? If you're willing to come and say, God, what do you want? How do you want me to be a part of your work? What to, what what way do you want me to be a tool? Why don't you come? Why don't you come? What way do you want me to be a tool? What things do you want me to do? For my family, for my neighborhood. Father, what do you want? God, what do you want for Sussex County? God, what do you want for Delaware? Lord, what do you want for the tri-state region? Father, how am I to combat the wickedness in this area? There are times, oh God, I know I can't. I can't do it, oh God. You've got to take over. You've got to work through me. You've got to empower. You've got to be the one to help. Oh, God, bring your help. Oh, we ask you, please. But most certainly every step, every day, we're not sure which way to go, what things to say, which neighborhoods to preach in, which ways to be a witness, which ways to minister to our wives and our children. Father, what do you want? Anyone else say I need to get down there. I need to get down there and ask God, what does he want? God, what do you want from me? How do you want me to be used? How do you want me to be a tool? Give me some specifics, oh Lord. Would you come? Would you come? Precious Lord, I thank you for our deacons and trustees. I feel that they protect me as the pastor. I feel that our church is one and unified in a billion ways. I'm overwhelmed by it. 
I sensed it today as we met as a group. I praise you for every single one of those guys. I thank you for the ladies that stand behind them. I praise you for the church that stands behind our deacons and trustees. I praise you for the union. I praise you for the growth. I'm overwhelmed by how many people could all think exactly the same way and be at peace and love with one another. It is stunning, my God. Will you work, oh God? Work on your people in a major way. If you're here tonight and you say, Pastor, I can't do any of this stuff because I've never been saved. I don't know Christ. You are welcome. Oh, there's several down here. Why don't you come? You are welcome to come. You are welcome to be saved. Or if you need to be baptized, you are welcome to come. Won't you come now? Anyone else? Shoo, gracious, praise the Lord. Anybody else? Come on. I'd like to do a different song than that is actually on here, Richard. Can you look up You Are the Christ? Is it on, on that list? Is it? Okay, let's do You Are the Christ and we'll finish up. What a blessing.